Hello, this is Gavin Patterson from Studio 1790 and today I've got a quick Cubase tip for you with regards to monitoring. So we'll dive straight into Cubase and start the video. So this is for people who are struggling to get quick playback of instruments or whether it's an external instrument like a guitar or it's an internal instrument. So we'll start I've got audio one here, I'll just call keyboard. So underneath uh, my desk just now, um, I have a keyboard. So I'll just, so you can see the, the meters there. You probably won't be able to hear that because it's not uh, rooted correctly just now, but that's, I can hear that in my headphones just now. And here I've got a drum machine, which you probably can hear. So. The reason being is because this here is within Cubase, it's in the computer already and it only has to come out of the computer. Fine. So this is playing audio files from my computer hard drive and then just playing it through the speakers. But in the keyboard's case, this is an actual keyboard instrument, which is just here, is recording from the keyboard into the interface, into the computer, and then back out again. So you're going to get a processing latency. So the way I get around that in Cubase is I go to Studio up the top, Studio Setup. I go down to, so this is my interface tab. You go to VST Audio Systems, or the VST Audio System, and then make sure that your audio interface is selected. Mine is the Yamaha Steinberg uh, UR824. Uh, 24 channel interface. So I click that and then I, I've got this box here checked direct monitoring and what that does uh, if, I un if I uncheck it just now I'll show you Okay, you can hear the keyboard now So the keyboard is being processed in real time and sent out the speakers when I click that when I click direct monitoring what it does is it allows me to monitor the inputs of my interface. So anything that's plugged into the inputs of this interface, um, I can hear it, not affected, which means I can't hear plugins. So if I say I go onto my keyboard channel and I open up the good old virtual mix rack, if I was to use any of these parameters at all, it would make no difference to the keyboard while it's being played. So it's a waste of time uh, <laughs> even having it when you're recording. But on playback, because it's only coming from the computer back out the speakers, then they work, then the plugins work. That's when you have direct monitoring on. The reason why you want direct monitoring is because there is zero latency when you're recording. So when I have a band in the studio, I have di direct monitoring turned on. What, what it means is they can hear themselves in time. There's no delay, there's no horrible time delay. It's so off-putting when you're hearing your, yourself a little half second after you've played it, it's, it's horrible. So I have that engaged all the time. So I, I just leave direct monitoring on all the time, which means that everything is being played back in real time. So all my audio inputs, so if I've got a guitar plugged in, or a keyboard, or a vocal, it's all real time, but unprocessed. If I wanted to hear this process, so say these plugins, I would have to uncheck that box, that direct monitoring box. However, I'll maybe, I'll maybe show you actually, I'll uncheck it and I'll I'll just I'll play a note. Okay. There you go. So I can now use this plugin. However, there's a little delay. Just as I'm I'm playing that. You probably can't hear it, but it's like a little half second after. And the more plugins you add in, the more that delay will be. Um there's a way to overcome that. So if you 
have an interface and you have Cubase and you come onto this window and direct monitoring isn't there or it's maybe grayed out and it's not an option, that means that your device doesn't support direct monitoring, which is a bummer, but there's a way around it. So there'll be a button up here called Control Panel and it looks different for every interface so you can just... Uh, it's the same settings, roughly speaking. So if you can find buffer size, go to go to buffer size and it'll give you all these weird things. So I've got it set to the highest number. What that means is the computer prioritizes the processing over the time. I don't care if it's got latency. If you look up here, 47.812 milliseconds delay, which is enormous. I don't care though, because I'm using direct monitoring, so it doesn't affect the musicians. That is just the playback to me. I, 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 there's gonna be a little bit of a delay on output latency, 51.812 milliseconds output delay, but I don't care. That means when I press play, it will take 51.812 milliseconds to play, but who cares? Um, so because I've got direct monitoring, it doesn't affect me. But if you're at home and you don't have direct, direct monitoring, the smaller this number on the buffer size, the smaller the time delay. So I'll put it to 32 samples, which is the smallest, and I'll click OK. Well, there you go. 3.813 milliseconds output delay. That is significantly less. It's more than 10 times smaller. So you could go with that, and it would probably be pretty in time. So I'll maybe try that. And that's it. So if I press a button on the keyboard, that's instant. That's I can't notice any difference there. That sounds great. However, if you look down here, that's my CPU meter. It just went up a little bit because the CPU is having to work extra hard to deliver this latency. So the, the more tracks and plugins you have, the harder your CPU will have to work to deliver that low latency. So you may only be able to have, depending on your computer, a small amount of tracks before it starts to break. So if you watch just now, if I turn on direct monitoring, it does nothing because the buffer size is still, yeah, because the, the output latency would be the same. So if I go back to control panel, so I'll put it back to 2048 samples, I'll click Gone. Down to almost nothing. So that's that's how I like to keep it, and I like to have direct monitoring turned on. Downside is, if a, if a singer is like, oh, I want more compression. Tough. I can't do it. No compression. Um, no EQ. The only thing I can do is I can maybe give them a little bit of reverb, which comes with the interface, but that's just because mine is it's quite a high-end interface and it comes with reverb built-in. But there's there's no processing I can do in real time, so that's the downside to it. But if you're at home and you want a quicker response time, mess around with your interface buffer size. So the higher the sample, higher the samples, the bigger the latency, but the smaller CPU, so you can get more tracks and more effects plugins. But if you're recording, and you don't have direct monitoring, get that down as low as you can get it without your CPU going off its head. So yeah, that was that's pretty much all I have to say on that. If you have any questions with regards to buffer size and you know all this stuff, leave a comment in this video and leave a like. And if you want more videos like this, you can let me know and consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell if you want to hear more and get notifications on new videos. Thanks for watching.